This, this is Saurabh, and, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The Weekly Show with Aditya. The lingering question on most Indians' mind is, will India ever win the Football World Cup? Despite the complicated nature of the rankings in this sport and compared to cricket where qualifying for a major tournament is relatively easier than football because in cricket there are only 15 teams out of which 10 qualify for a tournament and out of those 10, 7 or 8 teams are automatically in the tournament without sweating. So teams like Pakistan, New Zealand, Australia, England, India, South Africa don't have to break a sweat when it comes to qualifying for a tournament in India. They are automatically drafted into the tournament because of their influence in the international cricket committee and the money they pump into their various domestic tournaments and the revenue which the said council receives from them every year or what is called the share of each country into the council which can function and organize the World Cups. The likes of Bangladesh, Zimbabwe, Scotland, Ireland and other teams have to sweat to qualify. Well, let's include Bangladesh in the main roster now. So the teams of Zimbabwe, Ireland, Scotland and other teams which are associate nations, they have to sweat blood. Well, did I forget one more team? Yes, West Indies. Do they had to qualify for the World Cup. Now, let's also include Afghanistan in the main roster. So, which means Zimbabwe, Ireland, Scotland and other teams which are not even known in the cricketing world, which are more in other sports, have to sweat blood to qualify for the main roster. Let's look at the teams who qualify for the main roster without playing the qualifying tournaments which include India, Australia, Bangladesh, South Africa, New Zealand, England, Afghanistan and West Indies. So these are the teams which are automatically drafted but in football you have to sweat blood. You have to work very hard to qualify for the qualifiers first and then into the main tournament. So unless India qualifies for the World Cup, which means they have to go through a lot of hoops, a lot of red tape to get to that tournament, a lot of complications. In the World Cup then becomes a pipe dream because of such factors. And then thanks to the virus, all qualifiers have been shut down, which means that with the World Cup slated in 2022, with the Asian World Cup, which is the Asian version of the Euro Cup, India has to defeat a lot of teams like Kazakhstan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan and other Asian nations and Southeast Asian nations to even qualify and it's not easy considering how strong the teams of Kazakhstan, Afghanistan and other such Asian and Southeast Asian teams are. And there is that craze towards a certain sport which means that when we say football, we limit football to regionalism which means that when we use the term football in India, it's either the likes of Mohan Bagan or East Bengal which are the well-known domestic sites in the tournament. Even the players, the football players we adore so much who were there in the 50s and the 60s. They hardly played for India but they played a lot for these domestic teams. There is the question, where does the Indian Super League or the Indian Football League or the Indian Soccer League lie in the pool of various domestic tournaments? It's right at the bottom of the food chain because when you say international football, we say Euro Cup, UEFA Nations League, 
the Champions League, the Premier League, the FA Cup, the Bulldance League, the Serie A tournaments not only dominate the television but they also dominate the print because when such tournaments are conducted and even though there is not one Indian player in any of these pseudo private domestic tournaments we still get excited when the likes of Messi, Ronaldo, Mohamed Salah and their contemporaries and their coaches who were former players like the likes of Zidane they do well but when it comes to the Indian Super League or the Indian Soccer League as I said it's at the bottom of the food chain where does it go from here we don't think it's the best domestic tournament there are questions about the authentic nature of this tournament does it have an impact on Indian football and so many unnecessary stupid questions arise all the bureaucratic red tape that arises to make this tournament a good tournament now this particular domestic football tournament they will never be able to sign the likes of Ronaldo, Messi and their contemporaries because the fees asked by Ronaldo and others is more than the budget of the entire tournament to which team wants to recruit them, wants to draft them but by some medical if the teams are able to recruit them even as coaches in the future though it looks difficult because of the fees they demand and all their spoiled nature which has come into them because they are spoiled at every level it will be a big deal but this tournament compared to other tournaments and all the complications arising from the conduct of this tournament and the attitude we have towards this tournament it will be unfortunately at the bottom of the food chain as far as domestic football tournaments are concerned compared to the other tournaments like Premier League, FA Cup, UEFA Nations League, the Bundes League, the Serie A, the French League which have been there around for more than two to three decades. This tournament has only completed half a decade which is not even 10 years. So what's a tournament which started in 2014 compared to tournaments which started in the 1990s and slowly rose up to become on the top football tournament which signed top football players or which signed players who were nobodies to become players who are whom we respect but there is not a single Indian player apart from the current captain of the national team Sunil Chetri whom we know about there are other players rising but we make them fall flat on our own when we compare them to the likes of the overrated Ronaldo, Messi and their contemporaries. Despite the competition it faces in terms of other domestic tournaments or franchise or whatever nomenclature we may want to use, this tournament and its organizers have been stubborn enough to continue the tournament for six years. Of course, it's difficult to compare a team like Manchester City, Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal to teams like Delhi Dynamos, Chennai FC, Kerala FC, Jamshedpur, North East United. Our excitement towards the likes of Maradona and Pele who probably played a hundred years ago who are basically in the ancient zone now who no longer should be getting the respect they have retired they did that job they played in a time when they were zero rules anything special they did all those years ago during those medieval and ancient times doesn't count for anything in my book especially when there were no rules not too many matches were televised when these overrated individuals were playing. So whatever their greatness, it's been a word of mouth and we know the word of mouth often is not to be taken at face value. It is superficial.
will probably take thanks to our own prejudice towards other European tournaments to even consider the Indian Super League or the Indian Soccer League as a marquee sporting football tournament which can produce and can give opportunities to future footballers who will take India to the World Cup. But until that happens and this may not happen for Another 15 years if the organizers are able to sustain the budget and all the complications that arise from organizing such a tournament are that among all the chaos that has been created thanks to this illusionary virus. The fact that the organizers have put their foot down and said that no matter what happens, even if it's with limited audience or only the staff, we will conduct this tournament even if it's at limited location. So that's a good thought and I will be watching this tournament. No prejudice, no biasness because I think this tournament can become better than the likes of the other domestic tournaments. The Indian 20 over domestic tournament pulls players towards it just like the earth's gravity keeps its residents foot on the ground. The witchcraft like effect is so much that no international or Indian player wanted to miss this particular tournament despite being in the bubble and the arrest like situations for them. So they were ready to spend more than 70 days being contained inside the hotel or the ground. But a few of these players have decided that they will not play the similar tournaments of other countries because they cannot sustain themselves more in this. One thing that the bio bubble situation has led to is Organizers are ready to spend fortunes on making sure that the players are comfortable and this idea of comfortable gets into the spoiling the players zone, giving them all kinds of facilities so that they don't have to worry about minor things like practice grounds or gym facilities or the house in which they will live in. Once upon a time, what would have been considered a situation where the players were spoiled and in today's harsh economic conditions, it's unfair to give these players so much of facilities. Now, it's a common thing that the players cannot go out of that existing bubble, so they need to get everything towards them. As the famous quote goes, if the horse cannot go to the water, the water will come to the horse. And that's the collateral coming out of really prisoning players inside those conditions. But that's not the main discussion today. As we know, after the overhyped and the overrated Indian 20 over domestic World Cup, the Indian team has travel to Australia. They will play a certain number of matches and the biggest news emerging out of all this is that the captain will not be playing certain matches because he has to go home due to personal reasons and everybody, pseudo experts, coaches, former captains, whoever has a nose has weighed in their opinion that without the presence of this individual, the broadcasters and the team as a whole will suffer badly. Who is this player? It's of course the marquee guy Virat Kohli. Why is he going home? Well, that's a reason which shall not be discussed. He will be going home after playing a couple of games for personal reasons and all the pseudo experts have weighed in that in his absence, the team will not be able to reproduce what they did two years ago when they won the tournaments. This is what irks me, how much we give importance to one player that without this player, the rest of the team will flop or the rest of the team is essentially a flop. But that's how 
gullible we are the halo created around one player all the monikers given to this one player and saying that without this one player or athlete will be like a headless chicken without directions well i disagree for me this is an opportunity for other players whom we label as fringe to set the mouths of these pseudo experts thanks to the halo created around kohli and all the publicity around him even my listeners will partially agree that if kohli is missing out from the tournament the rest of the team has a zero chance because apart from kohli pujara rahane and up to some extent rahul who will be the player who will do the job but nobody is going to believe that the likes of rahul rohane pujara even rohit sharma can recreate the intensity the pseudo intensity that kohli brings but let me tell you what kohli does on the field is his character as a character he is supposed to bring that that pseudo intensity on the field because he is paid to do the same it's a key fave it's a character he is supposed to portray on the field which he has been successfully doing for the better part of 13 years a job like any other job which this individual is supposed to carry out the key fave is supposed to portray and that's what he does so will his absence make a difference no the other athletes will understand that now it's their opportunity to come out of the shadow of this player even if they are not half as intense like the player who will be missing out but you never know a marquee player emerges from this tournament do for the pseudo experts the likes of shuman gill rishab pant prithvi shaw are still in that fringe division well the pseudo experts who say this for me are in that fringe division so whatever these pseudo experts or fringe experts say i have nothing more to add to it but will kohli's absence make a difference no it is a 50 50 situation but the 50 situation is that no it will not make a difference yes because the broadcasters will play a role in this they will try to influence that without only the viewership will be impacted the revenues will be impacted well that's how it is don't be surprised if you see more ads surrounding this player before he leaves he may be forced to be a part of many more ads so that even if he is not part of the team he is part of the broadcaster's plans and every time there is a break they play his ads and even if the viewers watch his ads the return on investment is almost a make up for what will be missed for most fanatics it will be difficult for them to accept that without kohli the likes of shubman gill rishab pant prithvi shaw kl rahul they will be the breakout stars but if you ask me they will be the breakout stars and their performance will shut shop on whatever fanatism was surrounding kohli tonight's song running empty is how the contemporary world feels right now looking out at the road rushing under my wheels looking back at the years gone by like so many summer feels in 65 i was 17 and running up 101 i don't know where i'm running now i'm just running on running on running on empty running on running blind running on running into the sun but i am running behind got to do what you can just to keep your love alive try not to confuse it with what you can do to survive in 69 i was 21 and i call the road my own i don't know when that road turned into the road i'm on 
running on running on empty running on running blind running on running into the sun but i'm running behind everyone i know everywhere i go people need some reason to believe i don't know about anyone but me if it takes all night that will be all right if i can get you to smile before i leave out at the road rushing under my wheels i don't know how to tell you or just how crazy this life feels around for the friends that i used to turn to pull me through looking into their eyes i see them running too running on running on empty running on running blind running on running into the sun but i am running behind Running your way really to tempt me. You know the way you look so kind. I'd love to stick around, but I'm running behind. You know I don't even know what I'm hoping to find. Running into the sun, but I'm running behind. Reading session one, Agatha Christie, Labors of Hercules, chapter one. This Samuelson went on. When Nanki Poo was safely back again, I went to the place myself, Mr. Poirot. After all, three hundred pounds is three hundred pounds. Only it is. The very first thing I saw was my letter enclosing the money in a kind of bag in the hall. I was waiting for the proprietress. I slipped it into my bag. Unfortunately, Poirot said. Unfortunately, when you opened it, it contained only blank sheets of paper. How did you know? Mrs. Samuelson turned on him with awe. He shrugged his shoulders. Obviously, said Madame, the thief would take care to recover the money before he returned the dog. He would then replace the notes with blank paper and. Return the letter to the rack. Is its absence should be noticed? No such person as Commander Blackley had ever stayed there. Poirot smiled, and of course, my husband was extremely annoyed about the whole thing. In fact, he was livid, absolutely livid. Poirot murmured cautiously, "You did not." Uh, Consult him before dispatching the money. Be not said, Mrs. Samuelson, with a decision. Poirot looked a question. The lady explained, "I wouldn't have risked it for a moment. Men are so extraordinary when it's a question of money." Jacob would have insisted on going to the police. I couldn't risk that. My poor darling, Nanki Poo. Anything might have happened to him. Of course, I had to tell my husband afterwards because I had to explain why I was overdrawn at the bank. Poirot murmured, "Quite so, quite so." And I have really never seen him so angry. Men said, "Mrs. Samuelson rearranging her handsome diamond bracelet and turning her rings on her fingers." Think of nothing but money. P. G. Woodhouse, Chapter Seventeen. Her words had, of course, surprised me somewhat, and I asked her why Emerald Stoker had been as welcome as Mana in the W, because her arrival brought sunshine into a stricken home. There couldn't have been a smoother piece of timing. You didn't see Anatole when you were over there this afternoon, did you? No. Why? I wondered if you had noticed anything wrong with him. Shortly after you left, he developed a mal of foie or whatever he called it and took to his bed. I am sorry. So was Tom. He was looking forward gloomily to a dinner cooked by the kitchen maid, who, though a girl of many sterling merits, always adopts the Scotch herd policy when preparing a meal. And you know what his 
digestions like conditions looked dark and then spink bottle suddenly revealed that this picking niece of his was an experienced chef and she's taken over who is she do you know anything about her i was of course able to supply the desired information she is the daughter of a well to do american millionaire called stoker who i imagine will be full of strange oaths when he hears she is married gussy the latter being as you will concede not everyone's cup of tea so he isn't going to marry madeline basse no the future has been scratched that definite is it yes you can't have been much success as a resonor well i think she'll make spink bottle a good wife seems a very nice girl few better this leaves you in rather a spot doesn't it if madeline basse is now at large won't she expect you to fill in the aged relative is the fear that haunts me has jeeves nothing to suggest he says he hasn't but i have known him on previous occasions to be temporarily baffled and then suddenly to wave his magic wand and fix everything up so i haven't entirely lost hope for more awesome content tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with aditya for more awesome content tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with aditya